Moving ahead now, youth in Nigeria occupy a significant percentage that can enhance the development of the country if enabling environment is provided for them to thrive. And as the world marks this year's International Youth Day, the need to transform education among young people for more inclusion, accessibility and relevance is the bone of contention. Well, TVC News Olawako has a report now from one of the events organized here in Lagos to commemorate the day which climaxes today, August the 12th, as set aside by the United Nations. Ejiro Okotie is visually impaired. As a team lead, she sees her inclusion as this year's International Youth Day in Lagos as a commendable one. This year is different because there's a little more focus on people with disabilities and the need for inclusion across different sectors, particularly the educational sector. Sustainability. It is 20 years of celebrating the International Youth Day across the world, where relevant issues militating against the development of young people are raised. This year's theme is transforming education. From the over 200 million estimated population of Nigeria, 55.4% of young people in the country were recorded to be unemployed in the third quarter of 2018. Given the focus of this year's commemoration, transforming education to combine knowledge, life skills and critical thinking can arrest the situation. They are asking me the question of what can you do? Discussants at this program organized by Strategy for Mentoring Initiative and Leadership Empowerment in collaboration with the United Nations believe young people need support to contribute meaningfully to nation building. The robust discussion and education transformation beckons on the society to equip young people with the necessary skills needed to navigate the technological revolution. Ola Awakon, TBC News, Lagos. And joining me now is economist and life coach Hardin Udo. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you, Thank you very on much. the set this morning. All right, so talking, can we start with uh, celebrating the resilience of the youth in working with youth and then in the course of your uh, advocacy now? Mm. Uh, what key areas should one celebrate about the youth at this time? I would say in Nigeria, as, as the instant life, we should celebrate the, the perseverance, the persevering spirit of the Nigerian youth. Because in the midst of so much hardship, mm. in the midst of so much failings, they are still go-getters. Get us. And so that's what I would want to first celebrate. Now, let me borrow from the words of um, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General. It says, it's a day to celebrate the youth and all movements that are supporting and empowering the youth globally. Now, importantly, we have at no other time a population of youth globally that has crossed over 1.8 billion youths globally. Now, adolescent youths between the ages of, say, 12 to um, 24, they're about 20, 18, are said not to have basic skill of writing um, English and math. And this also uh, is observed here in Nigeria. You know, if you're looking at the global space, and that is the you statistics. You have to include. Mm. Yes. You know, a deficient definition of youth in the, in globally is based on age or economic circumstance. Now, by age, it says globally, a youth is defined as anyone between the ages of 16 to 24. But the African Union defines its own age bracket as between 16 to 35. So you can already see that we are at a disadvantage here. Now, par the drive for education, the sustainable development goal, whether it's poverty alleviation, whether it be um, free, education. free education, improved health care. The list is but The list is endless. Mm. Once education, which is supposed to be an enabler, is failing, the 2030 goals is an illusion. Okay, so, so that said, on the flip side too, we are also having uh, jobless, uh, joblessness now as a key challenge now in the country. Sure. So... On the other side now, how much of a leeway have our jobless youth, you know, gotten in the education sector? Now, you know, when you say that um, joblessness is, um, is a plague, 
it's what's plaguing the country as it is. Nigeria has be, is known to, is now called the center of poverty. So the youths are already on the back foot in the country. Now, you don't have education. You have straggling, strag, um, um, you have staggering job, job loss rates. You have um, unemployment rates that high. And it's been said you can't give what you don't you have. You don't have. And government is meant to be an enabler. Right. So what does the future pretend for the youth in Nigeria now? Right now, the future is bleak. We need to be doing more as a government. Okay. We need to be doing more as adults towards the unit, to the youths. Now, you see, the youths themselves are said to be our future. We're jeopardizing our future as it stands today. Harden Udo, we thank you very much for your insights on thank TVC you. Breakfast this morning. Thank you. Moving on now, the youth in Nigeria occupy a significant percentage that can enhance the development of the country if the enabling environment is provided for them to thrive. Well, as the world marks this year's International Youth Day, the need to transform education among youth peop uh, young people for more inclusion, accessibility and relevance is the bone of contention here. Ola Wakon has a report from one of the events organized in Lagos to commemorate the day which climaxes today as uh, set aside by the United Nations. Ejiro Okotie is visually impaired. As a team lead, she sees her inclusion as this year's International Youth Day in Lagos as a commendable one. This year is different because there's a little more focus on people with disabilities and the need for inclusion across different sectors, particularly the educational sector. Sustainability. It is 20 years of celebrating the International Youth Day across the world, where relevant issues militating against the development of young people are raised. This year's theme is transforming education. From the over 200 million estimated population of Nigeria, 55.4% of young people in the country were recorded to be unemployed in the third quarter of 2018. Given the focus of this year's commemoration, transforming education to combine knowledge, life skills, and critical thinking can arrest the situation. They're asking me the question of what can you do? Discussants at this program organized by Strategy for Mentoring Initiative and Leadership Empowerment in collaboration with the United Nations believe Young people need support to contribute meaningfully to nation building. The robust discussion and education transformation beckons on the society to equip young people with the necessary skills needed to navigate the technological revolution. Ola Awakon, TBC News, Lagos. Joining me now is an economist and life coach, Hardin Udo. Hardin, it's good to have you join me right now. Thank you, Mike. Nice to see you. Same here. Now, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, former, president, former governor of the CBN, Professor Charles Soludo, said that about close to 60% of Nigerian youth are unemployable. Mm -hmm. if, if we count down about 10 years memory lane, do you think we, we can still hold that statistics and say this is the situation no no it okay. would be it's be erroneous to do that Mike okay. uh, for the following reasons that um, currently um, the population um, of youths globally has increased to 1.8 billion hmm. of the 77 7.7 .7 billion people in excess in globally as well now as you know population it moves so if that figures was 10 years ago it may almost have doubled by now whoa so that's that how is, that, that is that, troubling. That's troubling. That is really okay. Troubling. We, when you speak with young people, mm. a lot of people complain. Okay, government has not done this. Government has not done that. Government has not done. What is what is this, this issue about government? Government? Sure. Government? Sure. As the case may be. I'll say this, Mike. Um, schooling mm. has contributed to that mindset. Okay. This is the what. This is why I say that. You know, by training. We, we train our brains to think in a particular way. And at times, we don't realize we have boxed it. Oh, okay. I mean, what better governance will you have if you don't have governance over your own self as an individual? Governing your mind, harnessing your abilities, 
being able to assess your environment yes. and how this impacts upon so, you. So, so there is no strategy, strategy and tact in the way that we're educating people. Is, sure. that, is that what sure. you're saying? We're, in other words, what we're doing is mostly what we're doing in the country is eruditing people mm. to pass exams and not educating people to contribute meaningfully to their own environment, community or nation. So a guy leaves school, or a girl, and all they're looking at as a possibility or a dream is trumming up a CV to go look for a job. Meanwhile, there's problems, myriads of problems around you that you should apply your God-given skills or abilities to resolve. So, again, youth empowerment comes into play mm. or focus. Why are you emp empowering the youth in the first place? You're saying, oh, we have to enhance your ability to think so that you have self-respect for yourself. You have to have the ability to decide so you're able to analyze all that is affecting you and make the right decisions to move you in the positive direction. All right. Yeah. We, we, we often talk about or hear about the issue of entrepreneurial skills, vocational skill training yeah. here and there. In yeah. fact, across the country, every state, every local government, you have this entrepreneurial, vocational, this and that. Uh, whether that is translating to that uh, robust prosperity for the country now, mm -hmm. we can't place our hands in there yet. But yeah. is it late for, does the vocational or, or entrepreneurial skill training yeah. address that issue you're talking about? Yeah, you see, the, 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 it, we're looking at it generally as the economical mm. aspect okay. of empowerment. Yes. So it does have its role. But then question is, are we jumping the gun? Mm. If you do not develop the psychological aspect okay. of the youth, okay. and you're giving him so, money so, to play so, with. So there has to be something ideological exactly. or something philosophic, something inside. Inside. Okay. And that's why the UN Secretary General is calling for a transformation of the educational systems. Mm. So take for instance, I give you a million naira to start business. I've empowered you financially, mm. but how are you going to employ it? Are you disciplined enough financially? Have you identified a problem to solve in the economy that is not just going to benefit your immediate needs? All right, yeah. let, let me ask this question that is uh, very common in the society out there. Yeah. Now, if you sit on an average young person now wants to sing, especially in Nigeria, an average young person now wants to act and all of that. <laughs> they want to become celebrities. In fact, I had a young person sometime who asked, Mike, I want to be a celebrity. How do I go about it? And I was like, celebrity is not an office. It's not an achievement. <laughs> Sure. Now, what is the impact, just before we go up, because I'm, I, I hear the, 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 so we have to round off now, but yeah. let me ask you this briefly. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of all this media westernization on, on how we think and how we're approaching this life? Again, it's pop culture. Hmm. We, we've turned a blind eye to pop culture. It's subverted all the cultures that we know as Nigerians, and that's the power of TV. Now, is it sustainable? Hmm. Is it a sustainable life? We already have historical facts to that. Michael Jackson has come and gone. You know, the, all the Elvis, other Elvis yeah, Presley all of them. <laughs> has come and gone. Do they contribute to the bottom line of the economy, GDP-wise? Yes, they've been productive. But we cannot turn a blind eye to all the sectors. We still need the health sector. We still need the educational sector. We need, still need the legal system. Right. So if we have all the use being loop-sided towards pop culture or being celebrities mm. and all, when they it leaves it, a vacuum. It leaves a vacuum. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice one you have told us there. There's, there has to be something ideological about. All right. Hardy Nudo, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very program. much, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Right. Okay. So the school of uh, celebrities in session. Oh, I yeah, see. exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. There has to be something changing about that, really, I must Absolutely. say. Uh, people want to become celebrities, you know. <laughs>